Hello and welcome to your daily dose of Satoshi's news. Today's date is Friday the 16th of February 2024, the year of a million transactions per second or more. Buy BSV.live, probably the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online, the original protocol and genuine Bitcoin. Let's get into it. So we're going to kick off obviously with a little bit of 365 days of Bitcoin history. What has history got in store for us today? Let's find out. The 16th of February, so we'll start on the 15th because uh, I didn't do a show yesterday, so here we go. On the 15th of February 2009, there was a quote here from Satoshi Nakamoto, where he said, A lot of people automatically dismiss e-currencies as a, as a lost cause because of all the companies that failed since the 1990s. I hope it's, um, I hope it's obvious it was only the centrally uh, controlled nature of those systems that mooded them or that the doomed them. I think this is the first time we're trying this decentralized, non-trusted based system, and that was from Satoshi Nakamoto. So let's have a quick look at the quote right here. Yeah, so it looks like he started off by saying, uh, could be they're talking about the old uh, Chormy, and that was from David Chorms, um, central mint stuff, uh, but maybe only because that was the only thing available. Maybe they would be interested in going in a new direction. And so he, get, he mentions the word uh, decentralized here, but uh, really, you know, it, the, the actual, the correct terminology is commoditized. Um, but I don't think anybody would have understood what commoditized means back then. So a decentralized was a kind of hook to, to get people interested. Oh, what's this concept of decentralized? How do you decentralize something? And it sort of does what it says on the tin. But as time has gone on, the powers that be have sort of obfuscated and confused people about the, the true meaning of decentralized and turn it, it turned it into a distributed so people think that uh, distributed systems are decentralized. Well, they're not. To be truly decentralized or commoditized, you have to be distributed and economically competitive. So there is no central point of authority or control or influence. That's the main thing. So decentralized doesn't really cut it. You have to say uh, commoditized these days. But again, no one's talking about it because a lot of the BTCs are like just <laughs> thick as two short planks, to be honest with you. So they would never understand this. Um, oh, let's, oh, oh, so that goes on to that goes on to the 18th. Don't need to go on to there then. Uh, let's see what else there was. So that was the 15th. Uh, also on the 15th of February in 2010, uh, it looks like Satoshi Nakamoto wrote here uh, another big jump in difficulty yesterday from 1.82 times to 2.53 times, a 39% increase since uh, 10 days ago. It was 10 days apart, not 14, because more nodes joined the uh, joined and generated the uh, 2016 blocks in less time. Let's have a look at this then. Um, that was there we go. What am I looking at there? In less time. So that must have been. I wonder if there's a prime one to that. Oh yeah, there we go. Talking about the increase in difficulty adjustment there. Hmm. All right. Great stuff. And then moving on to uh, the anniversary. Uh, oh, no. So this was the 15th of February 2016. I'll oh, check this out. This is classic. So uh, on the 15th of February 2016 was the initial release of BitConnect, one of the biggest and most famous scams in crypto. BitConnect allowed users to lend the value of BitConnect coin in return for interest payments. The marquee program was so-called lending platform where users traded Bitcoin for BitConnect coin, what a mistake it's a maker, and could lock in the instantaneous value of the coin for a set period of time while earning interest calculated daily. The interest payouts were determined by a so-called trading bot. <laughs> the trading bot was the most controversial piece of BitConnect.co systems. I wonder why. It's because it didn't exist. It was a massive Ponzi scheme. And Ponzi schemes collapse, as we have seen. They always do because they don't continue. Because the network gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's no products or service being moved in them. Until there is no payment to go out. And, the run, and whoever it was that initiated this system just simply runs off with everybody's cash. Um, but obviously we've got this very famous, uh, very uh, famous moment here. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, let's see under Wikipedia. Yeah, there we go. Look, initial release, 15th of February 2016. The BitConnect logo. I wonder who, uh, wonder who could forget that. Woohoo! 
Right, so let's have a quick listen to this famous bit of Bitcoin history. Here we go. Yeah, well, that's enough of that. <laughs> oh my goodness me. That is someone getting far too excited about a system that they knew absolutely nothing about. Oh my God. But anyhow. So moving back on to uh, today. Today's anniversary. So on the 16th of February 2010, um, we've got another quote here from Satoshi Nakamoto. He said, setting up multiple Bitcoin machines behind NAT. So let's see what this is all about then. Right now, there isn't a port number setting to do that. It's a feature yet to be implemented. You can only set uh, up your NAT, I don't know what that is, uh, to port forward one of the uh, computers. I'd said something earlier about NAT port translation, uh, but that wouldn't work. Other nodes um, wouldn't know to connect to that port. If you want, as a small optimization, you could run the rest of your computers as a Bitcoin Connect um, IP of the first computer. I wonder if that's where BitConnect got their name from. Um, so they uh, they get all the network communication from the first computer and don't all connect over the next individually for the same information. This saves bandwidth, although it doesn't use much bandwidth to begin with, so it wouldn't really uh, matter unless you had tons of computers. For redundancy, in the case the uh, first computer goes down, you could have two that connect out and the rest connect to both of them. The first two are run normally, the rest um, are run like uh, Bitcoin Connect, uh, I think that's IP1. Connect and IP2. And there's something, another one as well. This so uh, quote from Sir, um, Sir Jester on February 16th, 2010. Uh, question is, Satoshi, I figured it would take my uh, Modern Core 2 Duo about 20 hours non-stop uh, work to create, whatever that um, calculation is. With older PCs, it would take forever. Like, um, uh, people like to feel that they own something as soon as it's possible. Is there a way to make the generation more divisible? So say, um, instead of making whatever that was, every 20 hours, make something every two hours. Uh, and then Satoshi wrote here, um, I thought about that, but there wasn't a practical way to do smaller increments. The frequency of block generation is balanced between configuring transactions as fast as possible and the latency of the network. The algorithm aims for an average of six blocks per hour. If it was five BCNs and, and 60 per hour, there would be a 10 times as many blocks and the initial block download would take 10 times longer. It wouldn't work anyway because that would be um, only one minute average between blocks too close to the broadcast latency uh, when the network gets larger. Awesome. Awesome. That's the kind of stuff we want to know. Loving that. And was there another one? Mm. Yeah, these replies on the 17th, so that's, that's tomorrow. But that's that's cool. So here we go. This is him explaining the 10-minute the block time. Uh, six blocks uh, per hour. 60 minutes in an hour. Loving that. Loving that. Uh, let's see what else there was. So on the 16th of February 2017, there was a patent filed for registry and automated management method for blockchain enforced smart contracts. Check it out. Check it out. There we go. Registry and automated management method for blockchain enforcement smart contracts. Uh, application filed by Enchain Holdings on the 16th of February 2017. And it says here, inventor Craig Stephen Wright and... Um, I think that's uh, Stefan um, Stefan Savannah, uh, Enchain Holdings Limited. Brilliant! There we go. Loving that. So that's a little bit of Bitcoin history over with. Right. So let's get on to this court case. I know that's what everybody wants to um, uh, hear about. Let's get rid of that. Right. So. 
uh, this I'm just probably going to rant here a little bit to uh, if I'm honest because what I'm hearing in court is um, as I said here in this post right there so I'll just read this uh, Gavin Lucas said uh, does Copa actually have a case if so could someone explain it to me it feels like they're helping CSW along here just building his uh, um, character references and verifying his skills and Calvin had written, yeah, I think Craig is growing the um, growing the number who understands Satoshi could only be him in this trial for sure. And Craig's side has not even taken the floor yet. Once they get the floor, you will see them laying out uh, a broad, a lifelong proof of work around Craig creating Bitcoin, I expect. And that's true because we saw Craig's uh, side uh, literally uh, jumping up today and protesting, saying, look, what what has this line of questioning got to do with 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 I with identity? What what is this? All I'm hearing is is like, as I've said here, <laughs> quote here, all I hear are allegations of fraud and forged documents. The high court is a civil court based on contract. It is not a criminal court. If these claims of fraud and forgery were legitimate, where are the police reports and crime numbers associated with these criminal claims? Honestly, it's just absolutely ridiculous. So you have uh, criminal courts like the magistrates court and you have the crown court. But then you have the court of equity, which is solving disputes between people. It doesn't mean a crime is being committed. It means a contract, an agreement has been broken. That's literally all it is. So if there are allegations of forgery and fraud, they are criminal allegations. There should be crime reference numbers uh, with them because they should be reported to the police. That has got nothing to do with contract or agreement. So I don't really, well, I mean, again, I think it's just they've got such a shallow case. Uh, that's literally all they can go on. They're hoping to say, oh, yeah, so we've just proved that he's a liar and a fraud. Well, what's that got to do with our identity? Did he create Bitcoin or did he not? Oh, well, he's a fraud. So are you going to answer the question? Is he Satoshi Nakamoto or not? If he's not Satoshi Nakamoto, let's see the evidence that backs up your claim. What the hell do you think you're doing? You know, if you're bringing forward all these allegations of a criminal nature, fraud and fraud, report them to police, you know, and then if you report them to police and you then come across as being the uh, forger or the frauder, well, pff, you know, uh, if you, if you want to uh, uh, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. It's as simple as there should be no allegations, there should be no criminal allegations in this court whatsoever. So let's have a look at this. So it's the Court of Equity, often known as, as the High Court or the Court of Chancery. It says here, a Court of Equity, and again, equity stands above the law. Equity outranks law because equity is what is fair, is what is fair between two people. If you have been wronged by someone in the police force, you can take them to the Equity Court. Because they have they have committed a wrong against you, you know, and, and if that does if that is a, a crime, well, you know, um, then you can actually take them to the uh, the magistrates court and the and the uh, crown court yourself, um, you know, because uh, uh, obviously you know police uh, are also corrupt as well. Uh, so it says here, a court of equity, also known as an equity court or chancery court, is a court authorized to apply principles of equity rather than principles of law to cases brought before it and equity is fairness. Uh, these courts originated from petitions to the Lord Chancellor of England and primarily heard claims for relief other than um, other than damages. So again, damages were, is when um, uh, wrongs are, are compensated, whereas uh, relief is just simply where... Um, what's the best word for relief? Being relieved of something, something being sorted out. Um, you know, not being rewarded damages, but, you know, we'll, we'll sort this thing out. You are relieved from this, uh, from the situation that we have. Uh, so such as specific performance and all extraordinary writs. Over time, most equity courts merged with courts of law and the uh, adoption of various acts granted courts combined jurisdiction to administer common law and equity concurrently. Courts of equity are now recognised for complementing the common law by addressing its shortcomings and promoting justice. So again, you know, it's a justice is um, a, a agreement. You know, blah 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 blah. It's going to a little bit of history. Uh, the unique nature of the courts of equity is a result of their historical evolution. The history has been crucial in shaping their application in case law. Again, case law. Uh, case law being a lot of contract law, reflecting the values that have developed the equitable jurisdiction. 
um, the transformation of this course demonstrates the evolution of the equities, uh, equities doctrines and remedies, changes in its dormant nature and traits and the influence of social and political environments um, on its operation and underlying issues in um, jurisprudence. Yeah, that's pretty much all we need to know there. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's it. Do they have a case or do they not? You know, I, I'm not bothered. Like, oh, that's a fraud. That's a fraudery. So what? What is this about his identity? What have you got? It literally, it literally looks like they've got nothing. Uh, that's literally all. That's that's all I've got to say on that matter. Literally nothing. You know. Um, and like I said, if these if these criminal claims are legitimate, let's have crime numbers. Let's have a police report. But I very much doubt they would ever do it because they've got nothing. Literally nothing. It's all hearsay and speculation. There is no evidence whatsoever. Like none. None. Um, anyway, so uh, let's just uh, continue here. Um, somebody wanted me to talk on um, something that um, I'd, I'd seen here. Let's go to my profile. Oh, yeah, uh, this, we'll just report on this. So, Cavern and Poster Hero, new Bitcoin node um, out also. So, SV node software version 1.10. Let's have a look at this. Uh, just have a quick glance through this. So, this is published on the 15th of February, which is yesterday. So, it says um, BSV node software version 1.1.0 release overview. Security enhancements and peer management features for node operators are the main features included in this release. Uh, the 1.1.0 node release is a, a recommended upgrade for version 1.0.16. You can view the markdown format release notes here. Security enhancements, network peer co um, uh, connection management, configurable numbers of, pending peer-to-peer -peer messages, uh, response queue. <laughs> Response queue management, connection from the same IP address, connections to both inbound and outbound peers, general code security enhancements, uh, security dependency updates, updated um, uh, spec 2561k library version, blah, 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 uh, updated open SSL library version, uh, alert system version 1.1.0 um, uh, reintroduces the alert system. The alert system originally implemented on the uh, version 0 0.3.10 Bitcoin release enables the BSV Association to send signed messages to the network. Messages can be of an um, uh, informal or directive nature. This release also contains native support for digital um, asset recovery alerts. Node operators are required to run the alert system in, in the conjunction with the BSV node. Node operators who uh, do not interact with the um, alert system risk of being banned or having their blocks rejected by the node operators who do. Detailed instructions on how to run the alert system are available here. Network access rules. The BSV Association is also releasing the BSV blockchain network access rules. That's uh, NAR. The, uh, the network access rules formalize the terms and conditions for operating a node on the BSV blockchain. Read more about the network um, access rules here. Let's have a quick butchers at that. So introduction. Uh, the network access rule is the set of rules regulating the relationship between the BSV association and the nodes on BSV. It details their duties and obligations to the network and their relationship with the association. The rules are grounded in the principles of the Bitcoin protocol and Bitcoin white paper, ensuring that all nodes contribute to a lawful and honest network environment, providing transparency and guidance for network participants. Network activities in this um, instance include collecting, validating or accepting a block, uh, collating transactions into a block, attempting to find a proof of work block or broadcasting a block. All right. Yeah, table of contents. All right. So again, there's probably going to be uh, controversy over that just because shitcoin is always going to uh, spin that narrative. Um, but like I said, it's all about the protocol, which again, none of these shitcoiners or BTCers understand. Uh, the protocol is what actually commoditizes data. Uh, like So for example, uh, the network transactions have to be broadcast and logged and registered um, in a block on the network in the order that they were uploaded in. Because if they are not uploaded or recorded in the order that they are upload, uh, uploaded in, it means you have a third party that is purposely effing around with it. 
and this is what they've this is where they've really effed up on uh, B crash uh, because they've implemented uh, canonical transaction ordering whereas they should actually be in co um, or canonical transaction ordering whereas they should actually be in chronological order which is literally the order in which they were all uploaded you know I mean God knows why they did it but I mean uh, absolute uh, buffoons but literally there has to be no there has to be no central point of control so a central point of control is 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 um, a central point that would rearrange the um, the order in which transactions were broadcasted uh, or are uploaded to the network on things like that so for example the supply is fixed no one can change it no one controls it the protocol should remain the same because like nobody can change it no one controls it uh, you unbounded scale so that limitations and restrictions can't be manufactured and the network not be manipulated and then obviously you need a, a distributed uh, or a distributed economically competitive um, system and then common accountability with a chain of digital signatures the moment the moment that common common accountability is removed and that that chain of signatures is broken or tampered with you have a third party interfering with it and again that's where BTC has now become an economically worthless security offering and and again let's go back to this court case i've just got to bring this up again you know as well as them just going oh you know uh you know the, this document is it uh, um, is it forged is it you know um al allegations of fraud and all this kind of stuff uh like honestly it should be really easy to prove that bitcoin is bsv because it hasn't changed I would suspect there is something like, I think I heard uh, uh, the expression of replay protection, having to be added to these alternative protocols because their protocol changed. So there must be something like that. You can say when, uh, the, when the lawyer was kind of like cross-examining uh, the, uh, the patent uh, uh, lawyer today, um, nobody, nobody has turned around and said to them, look, because they were mentioning BSV as if it was something separate to Bitcoin. They're like, oh, so this is BSV. Well, somebody should have politely corrected them and said, no, it's Bitcoin. Bitcoin just simply has the ticker symbol BSV because what's happened is an alternative protocol has been created and you can prove an alternative uh, protocol has been created because the legacy address has changed. The alternative protocol started having legacy addresses beginning with the number 3 or BC and there must have been something else done in order to direct uh, nodes away. For, uh, changes have to have been made. All you need is for someone to point that out. A change was made because an alternative protocol has been produced. That's why. And you, know, you can do the same for Bitcoin Cash as well. You know, all the legacy addresses started beginning with uh, P and Q. You know, there must be something. It's really obvious. It must be really obvious. And like nobody's pointing that out yet. I think uh, somebody really should. And then you can say, well, uh, you know, nobody wants to be Satoshi. Nobody's claiming to be Satoshi. Even Craig says he doesn't want to be Satoshi. He only has to be Satoshi because there's huge amounts of fraud happening. Um, yeah, which is which it works, well, the largest bubble in financial history. It's the huge fraud. You know, and we need a money system because the current current, you know, the central banking system that we're using is fraud. It is blatant securities fraud as defined by SEC versus WJ Howico 1946, which means they are asset stripping all of us. They are, they, are, they are asset stripping us for our time and our resources, all for something they can just create at the touch of a button that doesn't represent anything, which is why it's securities fraud. So we need a common medium of exchange with common value so that businesses can then start to survive and thrive and we don't head towards this uh, totalitarian, dy totalitarian dystopian future uh, that the banks uh, want for us, you know, because they're a bunch of criminals, criminal enterprises. Um, and that's the only reason Craig has to come forward to stop the fraud being perpetrated on the people. But you've got all these BTCs going, oh, you're a liar and a fraud. What an absolute... It just makes you realise how stupid and unbelievably dumb people have got over these last few years. Um, unbelievable. Right, really. <laughs> um, I think, did I go over this just before? Let's have a look. Introduction to this. Um, this document serves as a reference for the protocol of the uh, BSV blockchain, which is an implementation of the original protocol. BSV Association. The BSV blockchain network is open for participation and usage by anyone. 
Uh, it uses a native token, Satoshi, as a mechanism for paying fees to write to the ledger. The custodian or steward of this network is the BSV Association. They are a non-profit organization which acts on behalf of the um, inventor Satoshi Nakamoto, the issuer and distributor of the native token, creator of the database and Bitcoin protocol. Their work involves maintaining free-to-use open source software for the participating um, entities known as the network nodes. As stewards of the network, the BSV Association monitors and ensures its protection from malicious activities. They also create and maintain open source utilities and software tools and contribute to a wide range of community services to advance blockchain technology. I mean, uh, I'm guessing that all the shitcoiners are going to try and uh, spin this because they don't understand what a commoditized protocol is. A commoditized protocol can only be created one way. And it's a bit like this. Um, so there is only one truth, but you can come up with an infinite number of lies once that truth has been out there. And it's a bit like that. The com you, data can only be commoditized one way, but you can make an infinite number of economically worthless, secure, um, illegal uh, security offerings, you know, and spin the narrative and all sorts of uh, other ways to do it. There isn't. Data can only be commoditized one way, therefore there will only be one digital commodity. And it's the BSV Association, uh, you know, the BSV Blockchain Association that oversees this. Uh, of course you're going to get all these shit coins going, oh, yeah, yeah they, they, they control it. No, they don't. They are maintaining it because data can only be commoditized one way. You lot can come up with as many shit coins as you want, but you'll be called out on it. And also, those shit coins don't work. <laughs> because again, data can only be commoditized one way, meaning it can, it can only be scaled one way. That is it. Um, and that's why Craig keeps saying, look, you know, um, um, the, the offer that he gave them uh, before the case started was, you know, I will let you continue with your bullshit projects, um, you know, so long as you acknowledge the fact that I'm Satoshi Nakamoto, I have this intellectual property IP, you can you continue creating your frauds and your forgery, well not forgery, it's just frauds, your scam coins, you know, um, but I will outcompete you because at the end of the day, it all comes down to utility. If something is useful, it's valuable. If something is useless, it's worthless. It's that simple. So we're going to see the usefulness of this network, which is data integrity, data security, um, you know, and, and a scaled a uh, network of that data which everybody can use because the data is common that's it so anyway that that's my rant i've been going for 26 minutes now <laughs> trying to uh, try and calm it down uh let's have a quick look at the figures then so 78 dollars uh transactions 34 percent block size 60 that's gone down a bit uh let's have a look at this uh well i've got 108 megabyte block 126 megabyte block yeah uh, still 2.6% more profitable to mine on SV. The door is being left open. And look at that. So the mining changing on Fisher Price Cash. Um, I think, I mean, it, it might it might look uh, like it's more decentralized, but it, it's not. And again, I mean, I, get, I think it's, it's just a distraction. But uh, BCH not looking good at all. Other miners absolutely crushing them. Uh, they won't last long. And let's have a look at this. Oh my God! So the the entire the market cap is 1.9 trillion dollars now. <sighs> that is scary when you realise what we're actually looking at and how much people have got invested in there. They've been suckered in by number go up, is what they've done. Let's have a look at the market. Whoa! What is this? What the hell is that? We've gone from a market cap of 97, uh, 97.1 billion dollars to 97.4 97.49 so basically that's 500 million 500 million has literally just gone in literally just gone in uh what time was that um 10 past four 10 past four what are we now um just 10 past six so uh two hour um just over uh two uh, two hours ago is what it is spot on oh my god Oh my god. Uh, that's why the market will be pumping and we all know this. All the shit coiners like BTCs can bury their head into the ground, but we know what's going on. Uh, my goodness me. Let's have a look at BSV's got a decent trade volume, 4.5%. Uh, uh, market cap just 1.5 billion. Um, only 2.8 million dollars worth of BSV available globally on the market. Um, the volume, so Huobi Global picking up. Uh, Coin DCX. Let's have a look at liquidity, though. 
Somebody uh, just asked me to look at um, uh, MEXC Global the other day. Haven't actually had a look at their website, uh, but uh, they look as though they have a fair, a fair bit of liquidity. Uh, not, not too much though. But uh, yeah, there we go. We'll leave it there. That is a half an hour show. Hope you enjoyed it. And so remember, we've got the largest court case in financial history taking place. We've just had a break for the weekend, starting again on Monday. And uh, so as ever, be aware, take care, stay safe out there, and we'll see you in the next one.